officially, are we officially in the summer, summertime? But we are certainly in the summer temperatures. And what that means for cool season grasses is that they, you know, lawns across the world are starting to struggle or not look the springtime grass that you saw. So I'm gonna put down some um, insecticide down today. Um, this is gonna be a quick video. I'm not gonna film me doing much, but June, around June is when I typically put this. Why do I put this down? Because the pros tell me to, uh, part of the reason, but you know, I spend a lot of time and money to make my lawn look good. So why not put a little extra protection uh, to make sure that insects um, don't kill my lawn. And there's a list of bugs here that it will kill. It will not kill uh, earthworms, which is important. But so supposedly this covers 12,500 square feet. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. So we are officially in summer starting to get really hot and what that means is cool season lawns starting to struggle I don't care if you water if you fertilize really well your grass this type of grass is not gonna look the same during the summertime than it does in the springtime or in the fall because it's out of element no matter how much you water it and keep it alive it's it's just not gonna be as happy as it is in the springtime when temperatures are cooler. So I did have some disease issues, but um, spraying it really uh, kind of stopped it. I've also stopped watering as much. I am gonna water today. So here are some tips for um, how to manage cool season grass like this in the summertime. Because you're it definitely you have to change your management style in the way you water, in the way you cut the lawn. So tip number one is mow taller. Uh, you've heard me say that the leaf blades are like solar panels. So the more, so more solar panels you have, airplane, airplane. So leaf tissue there is, the more it can store a lot of that energy and it's gonna need it to repair itself in the summer because that's the struggle. That's where it struggles the most. So mow tall, is my suggestion. Um, mow not as often, um, especially if you don't have irrigation. Mow very little, let it get shaggy. Wait until the rain comes and then you can mow. Mowing is a major stressor for, for tall grass, for uh, specifically for cool season grass like this. For any grass, you mow, it's gonna stress it out. You can mow if you have irrigation, but if you don't, don't mow as much. The other thing you can do is not fertilize as much. Heavy nitrogen is um, forcing some growth when your grass does not want to grow. It just wants to hunker down. It's not a good idea. You can still feed it, but feed it low amounts of nitrogen. The most important thing you need to do is um, give some potassium, which is that third number at the bottom of the bag. And that's gonna help it really strengthen up. And finally, the most important step to um, help your cool season lawn um, survive the summer is simply water. Obviously that's common sense. You want a deep watering, deep and infrequent. You want the water to go deep. You want the lawn to struggle a little bit. You want it to try to chase that water. You don't want to water every day. So watering is key to um, grass survival in the summer. When you get into temperatures of 95, 100 degrees out here in Atlanta, I'm going to be watering. My water schedule is going to be, I'm going to water every other day deep, meaning long, um, so the water can get deep. And then I'm going to water additionally every day, uh, two to three minutes, just to cool off the grass um, in the middle, like 2 p.m. around there. This is called syringing. And what that does is just cool down, cool off the, the grass. Not any different than you're out in the sun all day and you, you're you boiling hot and you jump in a pool and it's just that same relaxation. So a caveat about watering, and this is very crucial, is that be done with your watering around 4 or 5 p.m., okay? Because you want the water to dry off. You don't want to water 
in the like late nights because the water is going to sit in your lawn all night and it's going to cause fungus issues. Herbicides. You put down a herbicide when the grass is already struggling, you're going to you're going to hurt it, damage it even further. So go with the low rates or not don't um, kill weeds. Weeds are not the most important thing right now in your lawn. You're, you're, the most important thing is keeping your lawn green throughout the summer. Hold off the weed control until the wet, until your grass is a little bit more resilient and can bounce back easily if you do damage it. So if you can't tell, I took a shower. It's really hot. But forgot to mention a couple things um, that I was thinking about when I was in the shower. How do you determine how much water to put down? Well, what they say, the experts say that putting down one inch of water, one inch of water a week is recommended. And the way you measure that is simply putting out a flat container out in the lawn and figuring out how much output your irrigation has. And you want to reach to about one minute. So you count how much time it takes to reach one minute. And that's how long you run your irrigation uh, per week. So that's an easy way to do it. A lot of it depends on the temperature. For instance, I can water an inch today and in two days the ground will be rock solid because of the temperature. So it's just it depends on the location of your grass, if it's out in the open, if, if there's if it's thin, if there's some areas that have some spots that are uh, that don't have grass, those areas are gonna get cooked and get rock hard in a couple days. Uh, but in a typical thick lawn, uh, an inch a week should be enough to, uh, to, uh, to cover you. Oh, I cut the bag. Ugh. Just want to clarify, I'm not getting paid at all to say what I'm saying here. I'm not getting paid for this um, for this product. This is just me testing things out. Just want to lay it out there. All right, so as my summer fertilizer, I'm going to put down this new product uh, by uh, Carbon X. I'm oh, sorry, not Carbon X, Carbon Earth. I was really impressed by Carbon X, and I'm going to give this a shot. Uh, this is a seems like a really good summer fertilizer. It's uh, by Carbon Earth, and it's called X Green 818. We have an 818 situation. 8% 8 nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Most important number, like I mentioned, is potassium in the summertime, which is going to strengthen the, the cell walls of the plant, which is very necessary. It's got. Let's take a closer look. It's got. Calcium is very important for summer. It's got a flush, it's got 4% iron, which is gonna help with color. Um, potash or potassium. Uh, so one of the things I'm really excited about this is it's got this new technology called peptides. It's supposed to be a root promoting amino acid, something like that. It basically increases the root hairs in uh, plants, so. So it says right here, I don't know if you can see that, that recommending uh, setting number four for my Scott's edge guard. Another thing I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna film this, but if you saw the beginning of the season, I put my prodiamine at a half, um, I split up the application, uh, put half the rate that I normally do in, when I start the season. So now it's about the time for a second my second application. So I'm going to put this down. Prodiamine, if you don't know, is a chemical that prohibits weed seeds from germinating. So if you're wondering how is it possible to get a yard like this relatively weed free is due to prodiamine. This is the secret guys. This will prohibit weed seeds from, from germinating. Aside from also having a thick lawn, which just chokes out any weeds. So I'm going to put down this. I'm not going to film it but just letting you know. All right, here it is. Let's take a closer look at this stuff. It's really, really small stuff. It's uh, almost looks like sand. So according to some, this is supposed to be the melorganite uh, replacement, which uh, personally, without even putting it down, I think it's already a better um, alternative. I'm gonna do a quick test. I wanna see how this dissolves in water, how long it takes. Here I have a cat tuna can and uh, some water, and I'm gonna put it in there to see how long it takes to dissolve. I'm gonna come back to it in about three hours, 
and here is just a little bit of water like closer to what your lawn will be moist in terms of uh, water. Obviously your, your grass is not going to be drenched in water like this, but I just want to see uh, how long it takes to dissolve and kind of break down. So I'm going to put some in here and some in here. So, all right, we'll come back in about three hours. If you over apply this stuff, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna do one thing. It'll be fine. So I might have over applied this. Um, I, have half, I have half the bag left, so. Um, well, that's good. This is after just about 15 minutes. So it does break down pretty relatively fast. Um, see the water turning brown? That's poopy water, chicken poopy water. All right, it's been about three hours. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So, I don't know. That looks like maybe two good rain showers and that's what's gonna happen to the, the fertilizer. So, it is supposed to be slow release and this is after three hours of being wet. So this is probably closer to what it will look like in the bottom canopy of your grass as it's not covered in water like the other one. But All right guys, that's all I got. Short video, just a, a couple tips and we'll see how the fertilizer reacts in the next few days. I may do another video, but I don't expect a huge pop as it's supposed to be a sort of slow feeding type of fertilizer, not like uh, Carbon X. But, um, yeah, I'll keep you posted. See ya.